Hello friends, in this video I will be talking about the unstable subtrochanteric fractures. We all must have encountered subtrochanteric fractures at some or other stage of our experience. The problem in subtrochanteric fractures is not the reduction, it's actually to maintain the reduction throughout the process of intramedullary nailing for these fractures. The usual displacements in these fractures are flexion in sagittal plane and varus in coronal plane. So as far as reduction is concerned, reduction can be done by usual techniques. For varus, you can push the proximal part of femur medially to realign into the valgus and as far as the flexion is concerned you can use a percutaneous step incision and push an artery forceps or cockles forceps along the surface of femur to bring it anteriorly and then toggle it posteriorly so that the flexion is countered or otherwise you can use a homen lever also to perform the same maneuver so the varus and flexion both can be addressed and the reduction can be performed and whenever you are going to perform intramedullary nailing for these fractures first of all a correct ap view is very important for example if you see this view you might think this is a standard ap view but it's not why because you are not able to see the correct profile of greater trochanter and seeing the correct profile of greater trochanter is critical to ensure a correct entry point when performing an intramedullary nail for subtrochanteric fractures here also to some extent that part has been resolved and we are able to delineate the trochanter to some extent but still you see there is some overlap on the femoral neck and the greater trochanter that means the proximal segment is still externally rotated so we have to bring our c-arm to tilt it towards the side of the affected limb so that c-arm viewing angle will be in line with the external rotation of the proximal segment as you can see in this picture in the inset the fluoroscopic console has been rotated towards affected limb so that the external rotation of the proximal part is compensated and when this is done you'll get a view like this you'll see minimal overlap between greater to enter and whole of the neck is free of any overriding between greater to enter and neck femur this will ensure your correct entry point now coming to the most critical part of this process the entry point so there can be three kind of entry points you can start from a lateral entry point you can start from a medial entry point which is medial to the greater trochanter or you can start with an entry point which is just above the trochanteric tip and the direction of proximal reaming will decide what will be the track of proximal part of nail inside the proximal fragment so in this picture you can see the track will be directed medially when you are directing towards the canal so it will start from the greater trochanter or just lateral to it and going towards the intramedullary canal and here you can see it is starting from the part medial to the trochanteric tip and going towards the canal so it is oblique it is more or less straight and this which is starting over the greater trochanter or just lateral to it it is not going towards the intramedullary canal it is going towards the medial cortex so this one is vertical this is somewhat oblique and this is very oblique so these are the possibilities when you are creating an entry point and guiding your guide pair. If we see the lateral entry and medial direction, that means this one, entry is lateral and it is directed medially, obliquely. And what will happen if the proximal part of nail gets inserted into this track we have created? So the proximal part of the nail will have to occupy some space in the proximal fragment and that space will be the one which we have created. So if we insert the nail fully, then automatically the proximal fragment will deviate into various direction and this somewhat the outcome will be somewhat like this you see the entry point was lateral or just over the tip of trochanter it was directed medially and because of that there is very angulation of the proximal fragment now if the entry is medial and directed towards the canal then the track created will be almost vertical and the nail when inserted the proximal part of the canal the proximal part of the nail will occupy this space and that will result in a good alignment why because the distal part of the nail will match the axis of the remaining part of the shaft and proximal part of the nail will either be in line with that axis or will be in slight valgus and in subtrochanteric fractures it's preferable to get some valgus if you are not getting anatomical alignment so this will be the outcome when such an entry point is chosen and the direction is towards the canal now coming to the third variant of the entry point and its direction so the entry point here is over the greater trochanter or you can say just lateral to it and it is directed more obliquely towards the medial cortex so in such a situation the nail proximal part will seat in the proximal fragment like this and automatically you can see and you can see that the lower part of the nail is hitting the medial cortex so in such a situation the nail will try to seat inside this part of the proximal femur 
and because there is some cancerous bone so it may get some manipulation and may pass towards the canal will not directly hit here but there are chances of fracture of the medial cortex so you may generate an iatrogenic fracture in such a situation when your entry point is over the trochanter and you are directing it towards the medial side so automatically the fracture will happen here and you may manipulate the nail to pass into the distal fragment but there will be various angulation of the of various angulation at the fracture site you see this is the axis of proximal part and this is the axis of distal part so there is angulation in various direction as seen by this breakage of the medial cortex so that has covered the entry point in the ap view what about the lateral view so there can be possibility of a posterior entry and direction towards the canal then there is possibility of central entry somewhere here and directed towards the canal and then there is possibility of anterior entry and which is directed towards the posterior cortex it is very difficult to start from anterior and go directly towards the anterior cortex or the central canal because the proximal femur is slightly bored anteriorly so if you have an entry point which is anterior it is bound to go towards the posterior side as you can see in this diagram the straight trajectory will automatically go posteriorly so starting with the first entry point in which there is posterior entry and the direction is towards the middle part of the canal so here the track will be like this and when you insert the nail the nail will beautifully guide it towards the central part of the canal why because of the bow of the proximal femur if you try to extrapolate the bow proximally it will automatically land up somewhere here that means slightly posterior and in such a situation you will get a good reduction in lateral view when your entry point is posterior so here here you can see the entry point is posterior and it's directed towards the canal and we have been able to get a good reduction in lateral view when the entry point is central and directed towards the central part of the canal it might be difficult to go exactly centered in the distal part of the canal you might deviate slightly posteriorly but still you can achieve good direction when you start with an entry point which is central and towards the central part of the canal or near the central part of the canal you might have some flexion residual flexion once you have nailed the fracture as you can see here also because you see there is some anterior bowing and entry which is central in this part doesn't mean that it will go centrally here also because of the bow there will there will be some anterior overriding of the cortex as you can see in this picture the entry is very central and still the nail is going slightly posterior and there is in this slight flexion of the proximal fragment and what about this variant in which the entry is anterior and it is directed towards the posterior cortex here you have the risk of an iatrogenic fracture because the nail will start entry from the anterior part it will go and hit the posterior cortex you might fracture this part and there will be gross flexion of this fragment because of this entry point and direction as you can see here the entry point is somewhere anteriorly and it is directed posteriorly so the proximal fragment has remained in flexion because of the wrong track that has been created for the placement of nail and there are some concerns that whenever anti grade nailing is performed there is thick soft tissue muscular mass which does not allow the guide wire to be placed medial to the greater trochanter and directing it centrally towards the canal is more difficult so in such scenarios if the patient is thin built then you might not face any difficulty only thing you need to take care is to keep the soft tissue around the buttock region free of any hindrance like you have to keep the upper limb on affected side turned towards the opposite side so that it does not hinder your in your nail placement and there should be nothing between the gluteal region and the edge of the table but in some scenarios when the patient is bulky or obese or there is thick muscular mass which is not allowing the guide wire to be placed medial to the greater trochanter then you can use a cannulated curve all so there is a handle which can be placed in the lateral part and the sharp part will help you in guiding the guide wire for example here you see we have just entered the curved cannulated all in a part which is medial to the greater trochanter and the guide wire can easily be directed using this all the same thing can be done in lateral view also and whenever you are reaming be careful that the reduction should always be secured whenever the reaming and nailing is performed why because once we have created a wrong track once you have created a wrong track everything that you have done fails so you need to ensure that the reaming track is created when the good reduction is maintained and whenever there is chance of erring you have to err in a direction opposite to the deforming force so for example in ap view you can err towards the valgus and in lateral view you can err towards the extension if the proximal fragment has tendency to go in flexion like here 
And as far as the nail diameter is concerned, whether it should be fitting or loose, you need to be aware that if you have created a slightly wrong track in the femur and your fracture has tendency to go into varus, then a, then a lesser diameter nail will be at your rescue. Why? Because you can see in this video, you will be able to manipulate the proximal fragment even when you have created a slightly wrong track because a thinner nail will help you giving some extra space for manipulation. Once you have maintained a good alignment, then you can lock the proximal screw that will secure your alignment. And be careful, do not release the reduction maneuver unless you have locked the screws distally also. And what about the distal locking screws, whether you need to put static or dynamic? First thing, try to get maximum bone contact at the fracture site before putting any screw in the distal segment. And always put one static and one dynamic screw distally. Why? Because you need to have some option of dynamization. And if you put a dynamic screw without any static screw, then there will be excessive motion at the fracture site which can result in hypertrophic non-union. So it's better to get a bony contact and put both the screws distally. And what about the last resorts when reduction is not appropriate? First thing that you need to do is to remove nail and create more space in the proximal fragment and you can eat up more bone medially so that you are able to manipulate the proximal fragment as we have seen in previous diagram. And once that is done, then you can manipulate the fragment and use a smaller diameter nail or the same nail can also be used if you have created good amount of space in the proximal fragment you can use an awl or hollow mill which is also known as channel beamer and you can use bone booze also to remove the bone medial to the trochanteric rib and select the lesser diameter nail after that and if that is also not helpful then you need to open up the fracture and and use a lumen clamp to maintain the reduction during the process of reaming and once reaming is done then you can reinsert the nail with clamps on do not remove the clamp before putting the nail and if you are still not successful at least put the cephalomedullary screw in a stable position that means either central central or posterior inferior direction to avoid to avoid any complications because of early loosening or cut out of the screw